Well, good evening and welcome to Spirit and Word Fellowship, our Wednesday night service. It is so good to see you here tonight. How many came expecting God to do something, to speak Hallelujah. something? Amen. Yes, yes. So, Father, right now we just welcome your presence. Holy Spirit, come. We ask that you would prepare our hearts to receive from you tonight. We come expecting. And, Lord, we know that you will not let us down. You will not fail us. So help us to have ears to hear, open hearts to receive, Lord, that we might live out and understand, God, what you wanna to speak to us this night. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my God, I am a friend 
Take me past the outer courts Into the holy place Past the brazen altar Lord, I want to see your face Pass me by the crowds of people And the priests to sing your praise I hunger and thirst for your righteousness And it's only found in one place Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the coal, cleanse my lips. Here I am. To the holy place, past the brazen altar, Lord, I want to see your face. Take me by the crowds of people, and the priest to sing your praise. I hunger and thirst for your righteousness, and it's only found in one place. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy holies. Take the cold, cleanse my lips. Here I together worthy all together wonderful 
Father, we just praise you, and Lord, we just thank you for your faithfulness. Father, we just worship you. You are so good. You are so worthy. You are so mighty. You are so holy. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your presence that we can hardly sense here tonight, Lord. And we just humble ourselves right now, Lord. We pray that your kingdom would come, your perfect will would be done here in this space, Lord, as it is in heaven. Father, I pray that you would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our spirit man would be enlightened, Lord. Father, that we would know you more. Father, we just worship you. And I just want to take a moment, and Father, I just thank you for every good gift that you have given me. Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus that has washed away every one of my sins, Lord. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness to me when I was without faith. Father, I thank you for your long suffering, Lord, when I, when I was in a place in my life when I was struggling, Lord. Father, I just thank you that you are a good and faithful and loving God. And I thank you, Lord, that while I was still a sinner, Lord, Christ died on the cross to forgive me. Lord, when I, had, I've not, when I, had, when I couldn't figure it out on my own, Lord, you paid the price. So, Father, I just thank you for the gift of your Son, Lord. And I thank you that your Holy Spirit is here dwelling inside of us. You are so good, Lord. Father, I thank you in advance, Lord, for every prayer that we've been praying for. Lord, I thank you, Lord, in advance. Lord, I thank you for the prodigals coming home and being saved. Lord, I thank you for the brokenhearted being healed. Lord, I thank you for the one that is struggling with depression or anxiety. Lord, being healed in Jesus' name. Father, I just thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for every marriage that will be restored in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you that you are so faithful. 
Father, I thank you for every man and woman of God that you are raising up in this house to be a witness, to be a light to this world, to be a testimony of the goodness of God. And we thank you in advance for souls that will be saved. We thank you that you have called us to be a lighthouse in this community, in this world. So Father, we just honor you. You are so good, you are so worthy. I pray you would make yourself known tonight, Lord, that you would reveal yourself uh, as you've done through worship, that you would do it through the preaching of your word. And Father, I thank you that faith is gonna come tonight because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So Father, we are just excited. We are expecting. And Lord, I just thank you for all you're gonna do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Thank you, worship team. Amen, amen. It's so good to see everyone tonight. If somebody could help me and bring over that, that pulpit over here, I, I'd appreciate it. But it's just so good to see everyone here tonight. And um, uh, a brief announcement, but thank you, sir. A brief announcement before we get, begin. Uh, don't thank you. Don't forget that this Saturday is our spiritual emphasis and communion service, and so these are always uh, powerful services. Uh, these ones are not live stream, so you got to be in house uh, for this one. But we spend time. We just praise the Lord. We do testimonies. We take communion, and it's just a, a night of of building our faith. And so it's just such a great night. So Saturday at six o'clock, six not seven. Six o'clock. The very first one we did seven, and it was just too late, so we moved it to six o'clock, and so we want to uh, encourage everyone to come out. So tonight we have a, a special speaker. Uh, every month we have someone else who preaches. Now every other month, uh, Dr. Amy, uh, she, our teaching pastor, she brings an amazing word every other month. And the other month we have one of our other pastors or one of our up and coming ministers. They come up and they they present the word. And because we're all about building up ministers. God called us to turn our members into ministers. And so we want to train, we disciple, and we give opportunity and empower people uh, to, to minister. And so I'm just so grateful for all that God is doing and Dr. Ray Clark over there. And uh, we th we're just so grateful uh, for the ministry that God's called him to. And it's, it's an honor to be able to invest in his life. And so I know he's got a great word for us. So, Dr. Ray, come on up here and uh, bring us the word. Amen? Amen. Everybody give the Lord a praise. Who's fired up for the Lord tonight? I want everybody to I made it. Can you hear me? I want everybody to know that I made an investment in a clock so I can stay on schedule for Pastor Chris and I am right on time. Let me, let me, let me readjust it here. Hold on. All right. I am so excited to be up here this evening. Let's just lift our hands in praise to the Lord. Father, I thank you tonight. Thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. Father, you've been so good to us today. Father, I appreciate you. I love you. And I praise you. I praise you every day, whether I'm having a good day or a bad day. Lord, I, you get the praise no matter what. So, Lord, we love you. We praise you. We give you all the honor and the glory. Holy Ghost, this is your show my mouth is yours. Say whatever you want. My, my body is yours, Holy Ghost. I'm your vessel. I love you. I submit to you. And this is your evening. So bring forth the message that you want. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So I'm actually really excited to be up here because the Lord is working in my life and he's doing things for me that I'm just so excited about. And it's not me, it's all him, because I am the least to be doing this. And so tonight's sermon, uh, Pastor Chris mentored me and did some, some, some stuff with me and, and opened my, my eyeballs theologically to some stuff. So tonight's sermon actually came out of a song that I wrote. 
okay? Now, don't get excited. It is an elementary school level song. And if we have enough time, we're going to sing it because I love the Lord, and it's a song that I wrote to be close to the Lord. And I know it's, it's going to be repetitive, and it's okay, but for me, I can get into it. It's like I just, I love it. So let's just, let's just get into talking about what we're going to talk about tonight. So have you ever really thought about people, okay? So, I mean, think about people. People are the same today as they was back when Jesus walked the earth. Now, it's amazing to me. When I go to other countries, and I've been to several of them, I like to watch the people. I like to watch how they act, their mannerisms. I like to watch how the men treat the women and how the women treat the men. And I've just come to the conclusion that we're all the same. There's nothing changed since Jesus' time. They dealt with the same problems back then than we're dealing with right now. All this stuff going on in our schools and in the country and, and everything. So I just want to tell you that there's something else that hasn't changed, and that's society, okay? Now, our society today is really no different from 2,000 years ago, but there is one difference. And that difference is that the second and third heaven is getting closer to the earth, and the second heaven is getting compressed. And when the second heaven is compressing, Satan knows his time draws short. And so that's why the world is as crazy as it is today. And if you really want a verse that you can look at, and I'm not going to get into it tonight, but 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, if you read that verse, it is almost scary, the stuff that's going on today compared to that verse, how, how parallel it is to our world. So, folks, I just want to tell you that we are in spiritual warfare right now, okay? If your spiritual eyes were open, you would see that we are in a spiritual battle for the very soul of our nation. And I'm going to tell you, be of good cheer. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven draws near. Now, Jesus, that's what he preached, but it's the exact same today. So tonight, we're going to talk about just taking a closer look at ourselves, okay? How we operate under pressure. How do we walk with God every day? Tonight, I'm going to ask you some questions about motives. They're not really meant to, I'm not convicting anybody. I'm not condemning anybody because I'm, first of all, guilty of everything that I'm going to talk about tonight. But what my desire is for everybody to have a, a more intimate and close relationship with Lord Jesus. This is what it's all about, is, is the relationship. So tonight, there's really four topics that, that we're going to talk about. And I'm just going to tell you the four topics because it's, it's what the song is about. And it's, it's, I love you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Uh, I trust you, Lord and I praise you. So even though they're all a little different, you can't really have intimate relationship with the Lord and leave any of those out. You have to have them all to, 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 to have a relationship with them. So I hope you see the correlation to the topics, and, and this is what I'm going to go with just because I'm just happy about it. All right. So tonight's sermon is about how we view or interact with the Lord compared to our life situation. Our everyday walk with the Lord through the good and through the bad. So Jesus said, "Here on uh, He sends rain on the just and the unjust alike." So I can guarantee you that you're going to have a crappy day every once in a while. Just because we're believers and we're saved and we're going to heaven, that does not exempt us from what's coming down the pike. Okay, so we are definitely not promised a cakewalk. Jesus said also, here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. I've gone through a few of them, and I don't really know anybody that hasn't gone through at least one of them. But you know what? If you're walking with the Lord, you got nothing to fear. You already walk in victory. So the first topic I want to talk to you tonight about is, do you love the Lord now? or in the future? Well, for me, I love the Lord now, and I love him with all my heart, 
and that's my spirit man right here. I love him with all my soul and all my strength and with all my mind. And, and that's, and I'm speaking just for me, but that is how I love the Lord, okay? Now, this is what Jesus said we must do to live. Now, that is exactly what he said. We said he said, you have to love me with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your mind. So Jesus is telling us what we must do to live. And to live, you can live, but you ain't living. And there's a lot of Christians today that's living, but they ain't living. They're just getting by. So, but if you want to live with the joy, we're going to get down to some joy here in a minute. But if you want to live with it, that's what you must do. Now, Jesus, he gave us a very specific commandment on love. And I got to tell you, it's not a suggestion or a topic to be applied whenever you feel like it, okay? Like when you're at the grocery store and somebody jacks your spot, it's not a suggestion, all right? You just just go on, find another one. It's all good. But this is what we're going to talk about. John 15, 9, and I like the New Living Translation. And it says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. So we'll stop right there for a second. He's, he's given us a choice here to make, and we have to make a choice. We have to do something, okay, to remain in his love. So what do we have to do? We have to follow his commandments, okay? So if we want to remain in his love, we just follow his commandments. Now, let's, let's, let's read a little further, okay? Just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow, all right? Now, let's, now let's catch that because that's a whole topic right there, joy. Do you know how many Christians are walking around and they ain't got a lick of joy. I'm telling you, you go to the grocery store. I know they're angry over the prices. Trust me, I get gangster too, but they got no joy. So if they don't have joy, what else don't they have? Well, let's, let's go back. They don't have love. It's right here. In order to have the joy, you have to be in his love. So if you're not in his love, if they don't have love, they definitely ain't following no commandments. Okay, so, so this, is, this just plays into the question that, that, I'm, that I'm getting at. So now let's, let's finish this verse because Jesus tells us your joy will overflow. And I don't know about you, but I'm so joyful right now. I could, I could bust out in some dancing, man. I'm just, I love the Lord. But this is what he says. This is my commandment. Now listen, that ain't a suggestion. He just gave you and me a commandment. That's the king of glory right there. That's the sandals that you're going to bow before when you get to heaven. He just told you it's a commandment. Yes, sir. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. Now, is that a tall order? Because there's people on this planet that I have a real hard time with that. Now, he says to love them, so my job is to love them. I don't have to like them, but I got to love them. Okay, so here's the thing. So if we examine ourselves, do we, lo do we love Jesus now while we're in our troubles or are we waiting to truly love him after he delivers us or answers a prayer that we've been waiting on? And we've all been there, okay? I I'm telling you, I am the first one to put the big G for guilty. I've, I've waited on him to do something for me like this. I don't do it anymore because I, I've learned, thankfully. But what I'm telling you is, for me, I love Jesus unconditionally in spite of life circumstances. And I'm going to tell you this because anybody that knows me knows that I don't play games in this department. It's, it's over with. I completely am in love with the Lord. Okay? So... So, okay, I'm so excited. 
So I, I love them unconditionally in spite of my circumstances because I want to live. I want to live truly the best life he has for me here because we're only here for a minute. We're, we're, I mean, look, Jerry Savelle yesterday, was that the 15th tax day? Jerry Savelle went to glory. I mean, I'm sure he didn't get up and, and, and say, hey, today I'm going to glory. You never know. So when it's our time to go, I want to hear good, good job, good and faithful servant. So do you love Jesus the way he loves you? Are you living or are you dying? So that's just uh, topic one. All right, topic two. Do you need the Lord now or in the future? So, by the way, just so you all know, this is called narrative preaching. It's, it's a particular style. I'm pretty excited because I just learned it. <laughs> so for me, <clears throat> I need the Lord right now in every decision I make every day. Now, let me ask you all a question. Now, this ain't no joke. Do you all realize that the average person, and I did not know that until I did research, the average person makes 33 to 35,000 decisions a day. That's a lot of decisions to make without Christ in your thought life. And I'm telling you straight away, if you don't have them, whew, okay. So, do, Or do you need the Lord, and when I say need, I'm, I'm just saying this in, 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 a, in, a, in a way. Do you need the Lord because you need something from him? Now, don't get me wrong. We all, we all need something, okay? But do you need healing? Do you need finances? Whatever it is that you're waiting for, is that the reason that you need them? Or do you need them simply because he is? Or he draws you? In other words, do you need Jesus Christ for closeness and fellowship or a manifestation of something? The need I'm talking about for me is the need of seeking him. It's a oneness with him, a closeness, walking with him, contentment. It's so personal that if I don't have it, I'm totally out of sorts for me. So the word says, and I want to tell you what, what the word says about seeking, okay? The word says in Matthew, Matthew 6.33 in the Amplified Classic <clears throat> about seeking, and it says, but seek, and it says, aim at and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, and then all these things taken together will be given you besides. So what we actually need is not a manifestation, okay, but simply to seek the king of glory or the need for Jesus. The manifestation will come after you seek him, okay? If you, if you seek him with your heart. It's the same thing with tithing. God don't care about your money. He don't care if you put $10 million in that plate. Um, Pastor Chris probably be jumping up and down, but the Lord don't care. He cares about your heart. It could be a dollar. It could be five cents. And he cares the same way about you, your spirit, man. He wants you to need him. He wants you to need him out of your mind, not, not depend on him or want him because you need something from him. And there's a lot of Christians that seek the Lord and need him for the wrong motivation. So my question is, what, what is the actual need that, that, that you're going after, okay? Every problem you have in this life, I promise you, your answer to your problem is older than your problem, okay? The result of the problem is the need of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and that's the bottom. So that, that's the topic of need, and I am staying on schedule.
Man, I'm so stoked. We might sing too soft. All right. This is the third topic. And for me, this is, these, these, I love every one of these topics. But these next two, for me, are my powerhouse hitters. I mean, there is, okay, let's just get to it. I want to get to the meat of this joker. Mm. All right, do you trust the Lord now or in the future? Now, the Bible says a lot about trust, okay? A lot about trust. And we're going to talk about it. But for me, I trust the Lord right now. Amen, brother. And I'm going to tell you something. I made a quality decision a long time ago that I would trust the Lord no matter what circumstance come up in my life. And I'm going to tell you something. I promise you I have been tried in this department. And I have been found not guilty by the courts of heaven and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen, brother. So I'm going to tell you just like this. <clears throat> Let's get back to the quality of decision. I just want to. I just want to go there real quick. Now, I've talked about a quality decision before, and I'm gonna, just going to go over this very quickly. If you don't know what a quality decision, I'm going to give you a brief description, and we're just going to go with it. Let's say a lady's with a man, and the man is abusing her. Mentally, physically, sexually, doesn't make a difference. That woman has got to make a decision in her life. What is she going to do? Stay with this man that's beating her? Or is she going to make a, a quality decision and she's got to get away from it? I'm talking a quality decision is one where there's no turning back. You make it. It's done. There is no, there is no plan B, okay? So that is a quality decision. So I want to tell you in my life, and, you know, Satan don't mind Christians. I'm going to tell you this right now. This might come as a shock to you, but you guys sitting in this church don't bother him at all. In fact, he's probably sitting in here next to a couple of you. You understand? It don't bother you. It don't bother him. But let me tell you what's going to happen the minute you get, you get spirit-filled and you start doing something for the kingdom. You are a blip on his radar, and I can assure you he's coming after you. You will get no rest. You will be tried. And I'm going to tell you this. The devil's tried to take me out not once in the last three years. He's tried to take me out twice. My family's sitting right here. They can tell you. That girl right there on the front row, my daughter. Whew. The Lord is moving mightily in my life. He got a hold of me. I'm telling you, he is going to do things that just take me out of the equation. He's got plans for himself through these lips. And I'm telling you, I'm not only a blip on the devil's radar, he's got a squadron attached to me. They tried to take me out during COVID, that China bioweapon they put on our country. I not only had COVID, but I have pneumonia at the same time. And I'm telling you, it was close. But my Lord and my God, he not only came through with his word, he brought me out of that and took me through it. And it was all by the blood of Jesus. And then, after that, I'm going to tell everybody just a quick testimony. I love testimonies. I got so many testimonies, I probably could write a book on them. I know y'all have been watching me over the years. Come in here and sit down. Never had a lady with me, right? I thought that a few of y'all thought that I was going to, you know, because I never had a lady, right? But that's not true. I was, I was standing on God's word. I told God I went through a divorce, okay, straight up. I went through a divorce. It, it wasn't what I wanted at the time, but now it's a blessing. Thank you, thank you, Lord. But I'm going to tell you something. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I, I need a godly woman. And I said, I'm going to give you this, this list. This is what I want. And I made a long list of requirements for this woman. I went before the Lord, and I said, Lord, this is my list. 
I want your will to be done in my life, Lord. I want the woman you picked for me, and that's it. And I stood on it. I didn't go to bars. I didn't date nobody. And I was feeling kind of awkward because, man, I'm telling you, I've always had a girlfriend since I've been 12 years old. And I went through like three, four years or whatever that was without even talking to a woman. Well, let me tell you what he did. He not only brought me a wife, he brought me a godly wife. Sandy, stand up. This is the wife that my Lord and my God gave me. And I'm going to tell you something. He, he's got it all written in it. I so trust my Lord. I so trust him. If you sawed my legs off, I'd sign up for a decathlon. I'm telling you, that's how much I trust him. Whoo. Now, here's number two. So I got married last September. I stood right up here, and I pointed right there, and I prophesied, and I said I was going to get married right there, and the Lord did it, right? I got married. I tell everybody she did it to me, but the devil did it. I had a heart issue. They say, not me. If you know anything about me, I don't speak nothing over me. I'm not even going to tell you that I'm thinking about a cold. It ain't going to happen. You see people come into church, and they're in the grocery store. How you doing, brother? Oh, my back hurts. <laughs> I've been sick lately. And I got a migraine. They're going to have all three of them because they just gave the devil authority to put it all on them. So I'm very cautious with my mouth, and I would ask you guys to be too. So let's just get back to this. So they said I had a heart complication, a heart condition. And I'm telling you as I'm standing here right now, and my family is a witness to me, I never paid it no mind. I trusted in my God so much. I never paid it no mind. And not only did I pay it no mind, I never dwelled on it. I did have a procedure by faith, and my Lord and my God was faithful to his word and healed me, and I walk in complete healing today because my God and the blood of Jesus Christ took care of me. Hallelujah! Now, that's what you get for trusting the word and the Lord. So do you trust the Lord, or do you trust in your ability, your paycheck, or your self-righteousness? Now, listen. This is a big one in the church because there's a lot of people to say they trust the Lord, but what they trust is them Benjamin Franklins at the end of the week. And I'm going to tell you, they ain't going to get you too far if you ain't got the Lord to teach you how to spend it or teach you how to save it or teach you how to invest it, most especially teach you how to tithe with it, okay? So or are you waiting to trust the Lord until after you have seen something so you believe? Now, Proverbs 3, 5, in the New Living Translation, says about trust, and, and I love what it says. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. You know what? You got to have help to screw that one up. I'm telling you straight up. That is point blank how to trust the Lord. So, I'm just talking about trust. I'm talking about trust so deeply rooted in your spirit, man, that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know that when you pass this earth, your next breath, you will be praising the feet of the king of glory. You've got to completely trust him. And I praise the Lord, hallelujah. For me, I just praise the Lord that I am sold out for Jesus Christ. All right. Topic four, and I've got a couple minutes to, exp how does that go? Exp expunge, expound? I got almost expound on this one. Do you praise the Lord now or in the future? I mean, think about it. Well, I'm going to tell you how I operate. I praise the Lord now. I praise the Lord for what's coming the second it leaves my mouth as a prayer request. I receive what he has already given into my hands the very seconds I tell him what I desire. Now, did you notice something? What didn't I tell him? I didn't tell him what I, what I need. 
And that's something I never do. Because the Lord said, the Father knows what you need. So I don't waste my time telling him what I need because he knows it. I tell him what I want. And I'm going to tell you all a story. And this is a story that I'm going to tell you straight up. You're going to think, you've never seen a grown man cry. I cried. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened. I was at my barn one day, and I was doing some work, and I told the Lord. I looked up, and I said, Lord, I would like a 1979 Ford F-250. I don't care about the color. I want a two-wheel drive with a 460 motor and an automatic transmission. And that was a completely a desire in my heart, right? I said, thank you, Lord. I praise you for it. I love you. And I went on about my day, and I forgot. Well, several months later, I'm driving through town. And I'm, I'm driving over there on Route 11 near Kernstown. And I look over, and there's this brown pickup truck sitting there. I said, holy mackerel, that's a nice truck. I'm like, you know, this is like man stuff, man. I'm like, oh, man. And it just rose up in me. Pull in there. And I was like, nah, pull in there. So I pulled in there. And I pulled over by the truck, and there was a door on the side of the building. So I knocked on I didn't even look at the truck. Didn't walk up to the truck. Didn't go kick the tires. Did nothing. So I knocked on the door. And this pastor comes to the door. He says, can I help you? I says, yeah, who owns this truck? He says, well, I own that truck. I says, hmm. I says, you ever think about selling it? He said, and he went just like this. <sighs> no, no, I just can't do it. I said, I totally understand. That's an absolutely beautiful truck. And then I got to looking at him, and I said, did you used to be a pastor at uh, such and such a church? He said, and he looked at me, and I looked at him, and he says, yeah, I was there. I says, yeah, do you remember me? And then we recognized each other. I went to this church for 20 years. Jesus never was there, but I was there. <laughs> That's the God's honest truth. I'm not going to say what denominational church it was, but here's the deal. So he looked at me, and he said, Ray, he says, I really just don't want to sell the truck. I said, listen, I said, I will give you this much money for this truck. I said, here's my card, and if you change your mind, just call me. He says, fair enough. I said, okay. So I went about my way. I just, I was gone. Didn't even pay the truck no mind. Didn't even look at it. Well, next day, home, mowing grass, hot, went inside, sat down. My phone rang. He says, uh, I said, hello? He says, Ray? I says, Pastor John, how you doing, my brother? He says, Ray, I've been thinking about it, and I really want you to have that truck. I said, okay, okay. I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me come over and take a look at it, and then I'll give you a check, and then after the check clears, whatever, I'll come get the truck. He said, fair enough. So he gave me his address. So I went over there that afternoon. Got there, talked to him and his wife. His wife's a pastor, too. Talked to him. Told him things that were going on in my life, Jesse Duplantis and stuff. We were, that's about that time. So <clears throat> he went over, and, and I hadn't even looked at this truck, and he popped the hood. And I said, oh, that truck's got the 460. He said, oh, you know your Ford motors. I said, yeah. I said, I'm, I got a brand new King Ranch, but I'd rather drive this, okay? So I just didn't, and at this point, I still, I didn't even, I'm not, I'm not remembering what I asked the Lord for. Understand this. I'm, I'm just in the blind. So I pay for the truck, and I go home. Like two weeks later, he said, okay, Ray, come get your truck. And I said, okay. So I went, 
dropped my car off, and I got in this truck. And I, and I turned on Route 11. And I'm going to tell you how good the Lord is because he gets all the glory for this because it made me cry. I'm ready to cry right now of how good he is. I was driving up Route 11, and the Lord just come up in me, and he's like, how do you like it? And I'm like, and I, I, he brought to remembrance. And I'm driving this truck. I've already bought this truck, and I didn't even look at it. And I was so humbled because he gave me a 1979 Ford F-250 Camper Special, two-wheel drive, walnut brown, with a 460 motor, automatic transmission, everything exactly that I asked for to the T. Now, I'm going to tell you, he is no respecters of persons. If he will do that for me, he will do that for you. You just have to have your heart right. And I'm telling you, he's so good. Lord, thank you so much for that truck. Lord, I just praise you for it right now. All right, I wanted to tell you that because I've got a testimony is worth a million words. Okay, we can talk about what we ought to do, but when you know what the Lord's done for you, it's over with. All right, I really want to sing this song, so we're going to move forward with this. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, New King James Version says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. This is how the kingdom works. Now listen, Jesus said to Thomas in John 20, 29, Amplified Classic, and this is all about believing. Jesus said to Thomas, Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, Thomas, do you now believe, trust, have faith. Blessed and happy and to be envied are those who have never seen me and yet have believed and adhered to and trusted, there's the word, trusted and relied on me. So this is, this is the, the mindset Jesus wants us to be in. He wants us to trust him, okay? Now let's talk about King Jehoshaphat just because we're, we're getting back to praise here and then we're going to wrap this up. <clears throat> King Jehoshaphat, and I'm not theological, but I'm going to tell you, he was up against some powerful stuff. He was about to be wiped out. Okay, he had armies facing him. His army was not big enough to, to beat this army. He was, he was utterly outmanned and outgunned as that play up here did. That song, outmanned and outgunned, this, this cat was in trouble. And what did he do? He went to the Lord. The prophet come in. The prophet told him what to do. But here's what Jehoshaphat did, and this is what you need to do. If you need a breakthrough, I'm telling you right now how to get your breakthrough. Okay, but it's not all, it's not a, it's not a, uh, a blab and grab preaching. So don't get me wrong. You, it's conditional. You, you got to, you got to be honoring the Lord and walking with the Lord. But this is, I'm going to read this because this is, this is the God we serve right here. And this is in Second Chronicles 20, 21 through 25. And then I like the New Living Translation, Okay. And it said, after consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and what? Praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Now, you remember when I first started this, we're talking about people. Now, let me just tell you about this guy. This guy was facing certain death. And I'm telling you, these cats ain't coming in to take them for a cup of coffee. They're coming up to cut them up into pieces. He's just like me and you. He put his britches on just like you put yours on. Now, what would you do if you woke up tomorrow morning and you knew that you had a, you know, whatever outside your front door and they're getting ready to chop you up? This is for real. Here's what the Lord said. At the very moment, they began to sing and give praise. That is the key to it. At the very moment, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. 
The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived, now that's Jehoshaphat's army, okay? That's his, that's his you might as well say that was his Gideon bunch because they didn't have enough men to, to tackle this cat. They, they just didn't, they didn't, they didn't have it. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuables, more than they could carry. There was so much plunder that it took three days just to collect it all. That is the God we serve. And if you trust him, you love him, and you need him, and you praise him, you will have your manifestation. It can't not work, period. That's my phrase. I tagged that joker. It can't not work, okay? So I say to you, if you're waiting to praise God until after you see results, you will never see or experience the manifestation or the victory that you're waiting on. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Use it because God gave it to you. And he also, when he gave it to you, he told you which one to choose. Choose life. So choose it. Now, my favorite part. That's it. That's all I got for you. But here's what I want to say. So those four points, what my hope is, and, and this is all genuine hope for me, okay? Now, let's talk about hope for real quick. Hope is future tense. Don't hope, okay? That's, that probably was a bad choice of words for me. Faith is now. Hope is future. Don't hope. Just have faith. My expectation is that you guys would examine your hearts and anything that you can tweak to bring in the line into God's word and walk, go right back to what he said, his commandments. If you want his love, follow his commandment, okay? And if you want to live, I mean, that's it. That's it. That's all you got. You want joy? You see me? I got so much joy, I can't even stand it. And I'm telling you, I'm walking with him. My sincere hope and appreciation for being here tonight, Lord, I just thank you. Lord, bless everybody in here tonight, Lord. Lord, I pray you bless their families, their children. I pray you bless their finances. Lord, I just thank you, love you, and appreciate you in Jesus' name. All right. My, I, just, I just want you guys to really get something out of this. And if you did, that's wonderful. If just one person got one thing out of this, my whole day is completed. That makes me happy. Now, I want to sing a song. I've got just like, man, can I sing it? Okay. I'm, we're going to sing this song. Now, listen, I wrote it. I told you it's elementary school. It's really easy. If you guys would sing it with me, we're just going to run it through two times, and that's it. But this song, I'm just going to tell you, when we're singing it, just, just close your eyes and just seek them. Just seek them and give them glory and honor, okay? I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. All right, y'all sing it with me now. Let's just do this last one together, okay? I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I 
need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Father, we just thank you and honor you tonight. You are so good to us, Father. Father, thank you for your son. Lord Jesus, thank you for your blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you've done for us. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. A gift you give us we can never earn, and it was bought and paid for with your blood, Lord Jesus. Lord, bless everybody as they leave here. Lord, keep them. And Lord, we just thank you that you're our shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen. Like that? Look, I'm handing it back to you. Amen. Amen. Ray, that was a great job, man. I'm so proud of you. Fantastic. Now, don't leave. We've got, we got two more orders of business. So, Michael, come on up here. He came up to me. He says the Lord put a song on his heart as well. I want you to use your mic. Yes. And then afterwards, Ray, we are going to lay hands on you. Um, I know the rest of the Cuba team's not here, but we want, you're going to stand in the gap for, uh, for them. Ray, I just wanted to thank you for that so much. Um, your your message, I mean, this, this song's been on my heart all week. I asked, actually asked Stefan if he could if he could play it, and we couldn't find the chords. And, and I was like, okay, well, it just wasn't meant to happen. And then your message started off, and it was, it's it's the song. And then your song is the song. So, <laughs> so, um, and then, and there's other things that had to happen to, to lead me to actually do this acapella. I was kind of singing a little bit in here in the back before service. And Gina was like, you just need, why aren't you singing like that when, you know, during service? And, oh, there she is. She, it's her fault. It's her fault. And she said, she said, well, why don't you just do it acapella? And I was like, well, that's not really. Um, but, so I'm just going to try and share as the Lord leads me. It really went away. I'm sorry. One second. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love. With Jesus was the best thing I've ever, ever done. When his arms I feel protected, in his arms never disconnected. When his arms I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather, rather be. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. 
was the best thing I've ever, ever done. That's all I said. Amen. <laughs> All right, you know what you just started, man. We're going <laughs> to. <Woo>. Bro. <laughs> Ray and Sandy, come on up here. All right, you guys, we're going we're gonna to lay hands on them, and we're going to be also praying for Pastor Bob and Christy and Ms. Valerie as they're going to be going to Cuba on Saturday, ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. Kelly, come on up here with me. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah. Lord, we just thank you that your hand of God will be upon yeah. this team. Father, I pray that your anointing would rest yes. upon Ray and Sandy, yes. Pastor Emeritus Bob and yes. Christy and Valerie. Father, I pray that you would anoint this team yes. um, and, Lord, that you would anoint their preaching, you would anoint yes. their witnessing. Thank Father, that you would set up mighty divine appointments yes. in the churches, in the marketplace, in the street corners, in the alleys, on the road. Father, I just thank you, Lord. Thank you. And Father, I thank you for all the salvations. I thank you for the healings. I thank you that the captive will be set free. So, Father, we just praise you and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, listen, love you guys. And uh, we will see you on Saturday at 6 o'clock for spiritual emphasis service and communion service and then church on Sunday. All right, love you guys. God bless you.